Hello and welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel. Yeah, today I would like to show you something funny, something not so common. I would like to connect this one inch black and white CRT screen to an old computer setup to see how good is the quality of the image and if we are able to play an old DOS game on the screen just for fun. Yeah, does it make sense typically to use a one inch CRT on a computer setup? Definitely not. But does it make sense to have fun, play around with old interesting electronics and vintage computer hardware? Absolutely yes, and therefore we are going to do this by now. Yeah, so where can you find these small CRTs? Typically they were built in in the viewfinder of old camera systems. The viewfinder is a part which was mounted on the top of the camera. Inside you have the CRT which provides you an image of what you were recording at the moment old VHS camera systems you can get on eBay from 10 to 50 dollars. The only knowledge you should have is to know how to disassemble these kind of viewfinders and what kind of voltages you need to supply the circuitry and to get the right uh, video signal to supply uh, your electronics to get an image on the screen. What kind of computer hardware I'm going to use for this setup here? I will go for a 4086 setup and I'm going to use the ASUS PVI 4086 SP3 mainboard. It was one of the best mainboards back in the days for using uh, a 4086 processor. It gives me the possibility to use any 4086 processor which was existing on the market back in the days. And here some more details about the hardware I'm going to use for the setup. As I mentioned already, the ASUS PBI 4086 SP3 is a very nice and powerful 4086 mainboard. We have here four ISA bus connectors available, one with the VESA local bus extension, also three PCI slots, which is very nice for a 4086 mainboard. Also on board the floppy, the floppy and the hard disk drive controller and two Edo RAM sockets. The standard AT power connector and of course the socket 3. Here you can put all kind of standard 4086 processors and also the Intel Pentium overdrive processor. On this board we have 265 kilobytes of second level cache installed and at this jumper array you can nicely set the voltage and the type of your CPU. I mentioned already that you can put here a big spread of CPUs inside of this board AMD, Cyrix, Kingston, UMC, whatever, this board is capable of all those CPUs. Just set the voltage and the type of CPU and you can check nicely different uh, brands of 4086 CPUs with the same setup. For the video card I'm going for a Trident 9000 with 512 kilobytes of video memory. Should be also more than enough to play some nice old DOS games. To have a proper sound, just the standard Creative Sound Blaster 16, the model CT2970. As a hard disk drive, I'm using this 1GB flash module, which you can connect directly to the 40 pin IDE connector. I, also, I already pre installed MS DOS 6.2 and all needed games and testing programs, which I usually use for testing a 4086 setup. Yeah, it's time to choose the right CPU for our setup. I would like to go for an Intel 4086 DX266 MHz CPU. This CPU is absolutely more than enough to play some old vintage games. There are several 66 MHz versions from Intel existing. I will go for the SPEC number SX759. It came already with an attached heatsink from Intel and with this blue color and this nice printing on the top, it gives the whole system a very nice vintage look. Yeah, here we have the monitor module. Nicely we can see here the CRT, the cathode ray tube uh, with the deflection coils and the connection for the flyback voltage. Everything connected to this PCB, which is already able to show a video composite signal directly here on the screen. Always take care by handling a, a system like that. Any cathode ray tube PCBs or systems are always supplying high voltage to the tube. 
in this case the flyback voltage is about between 5 to 7 kilovolts so it's absolutely high enough that it can bite you very strong if you don't care handling and supplying a PCB like that. Uh, to switch on or to, to, to get it work um, you just need to supply here 12 volts so we just need 12 volts, a ground connection and a connection for the video signal. In this case this module was not working, I tested it already due to its age some capacitors were leaking and I had to replace them and did some fixing on the PCB. So how do we connect the standard VGA signal to a video composite signal? For this purpose I ordered at Amazon a very cheap adapter. This is converting the standard VGA signal to RCA. We have here a VGA in, VGA out, S video out and the video RCA out. This adapter gets supplied with 5 volt, so you can use any USB power supply to to supply this module. Uh, here we have also some some buttons where you can zoom in and zoom out, and with here you can open the menu where you can uh, change from NTSC to signal to PAL signals. So this adapter, I think it was about twenty dollars, is able to handle all kind of video signals on the output. Yeah then, let's set up the whole stuff here. Hopefully it's going to work fine. Um, I'm still thinking about what kind of game I should try to play on this small screen. It will be definitely not something very sophisticating because for this the screen is for sure too small. I think I'm going for Prince of Persia. You can play this in two dimensions and the screen should be big enough that I can try to play at least one level of this game. Yeah, everything is set up nicely now and I'm ready to switch on the system here. Of course I will start to supply the CRT to check if this is somehow nicely working. I already prepared the power supply to 12 volt. Yeah, let's supply. Okay, so we have here 130 milliamps. This is quite fine and in the specification for this small CRT. Yeah, and we have here already some grayish flickering here on the CRT. So this part is working. Then let's switch it on. So the computer is supplied and hopefully, yes, we have a picture. We have a picture, a one inch picture. <laughs> nice, very nice. It's very sharp. It's, I'm very surprised how sharp this picture quality is. Let me, I would like to show you with a lens. You can even read the text here on, on, on this small CRT, so, so it's, it's, it's really surprisingly sharp, very very sharp and also a, a, a quite nice contrast ratio, so I like it. I'm very curious how a game will look like on this small screen. Yeah, then let's try some cool games, I think. First, I will go for, of course, Doom. Let's check. It's loading. Nice, very nice. We have a very nice and sharp and crisp picture. I like it. And it's definitely somehow playable. Nice, this is weird. It's so small, but still. Yeah, it's definitely playable on a one inch screen. And the contrast, it looks so nice. 
Yeah, but I died anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so let's try something else. From one of my favorites in the past was Pinball Dreams. Let's see. A two-dimensional game should be much easier to play on such a small screen. Yeah, so I can read everything. Very nice contrast. Very, very nice. So let's check. It's so weird, it's small and still still such a good picture. Quite nice, I like it very much. And I think I will go now for the game I was looking forward to. Prince of Persia. Yeah, so I will try to play the whole level one. Yeah, all in all, I had a lot of fun setting up the system and being surprised how good the quality of such a small CRT is. I hope you liked the video and if so, please comment below or subscribe. Thank you very much and have a nice day.